in Christ the ever-blessed one, dearly beloved friends. We celebrate Holy Cross Day, a minor festival in the scheme of things within the church's year of grace, and yet when observed holds great promise for our reflection and for our contemplation. The actual day is September the 14th, and tradition holds that on that day, as they were building a basilica in Jerusalem, they discovered what they believed were several pieces of the true cross, the cross upon which Christ himself was crucified. And rejoicing in that miraculous finding, they set the day aside for giving thanks for the holy and blessed cross. And that tradition was kept and is kept to this day. Now, to be sure, as the centuries passed, everybody seemed to want and to have a piece of the true cross. In fact, there were so many pieces of the true cross that there was probably enough bored feet to go around the world. But that wasn't the point. The point was to focus on that symbol, that means by which God reconciles all of creation and redeems all humanity to himself. And as we reflect on that, the time's need for you and me to lift high the cross, not just because it is a symbol, but to lift high what that cross means in daily action and observance in our lives. Frequently, the cross simply becomes, because it is such a widespread symbol, only a means of decoration, empty and void of any meaning. People wear crosses around their necks as jewelry. They are tattooed with crosses for whatever reason. There are all sorts of crosses, empty crucifixes with the body of Christ on them, processional crosses made from palms. Every imaginable material has been used to shape and form a cross. And all the traditions that surround us are helpful, for they're designed even when we forget, even when the cross only becomes a decorative item that fills out the decor in somebody's home or in their ensemble. The cross still stands before us and we need to fill it with new meaning for a world that so often forgets for each one of ourselves, for it's easy for us to forget. We belong to the Christ of the cross. We have been marked with that sign in holy baptism. And each day we place it upon ourselves because it is the way and the means by which we redeem the world as Christ redeemed us all once and for all. It may seem strange to have turned this Roman instrument of capital punishment into a sign of victory. It was for them <clears throat> to be a sign of disgrace, of criminal behavior, of all sorts of ways in which to denigrate and degradate and slowly kill 
a human being. And the Romans were good at it. But so was our Lord Jesus Christ. From that cross, arms outstretched, he embraced everything, sin, evil, death, taking it into himself to the point where you know the words, he cries out, God, why have you forsaken me? And because we know how the story turns out, we understand that was never the case. And yet, in our current time and age, and given the climates around us, political and otherwise, it is easy to say, why has God forsaken us or forgotten about us? Why doesn't God do something about all these terrible storms, about the killings on our streets, about the poverty here and around the world? Why doesn't God do something? Has God forsaken us? And when we look at what's happening internally within the church, with constant rumors and accusations and the reality of sexual abuse, as I said the other Sunday, it makes you wonder if we should even go to church anymore. Where is God in the midst of all of this, even in the church? It appears sometimes that God is absent. And yet, we know that Christ's promise is true. I am with you always to the end of the ages. And as we remind ourselves about that, we need to look to the cross because it was precisely when everybody including Christ himself, was ready to give up. It's over. It's finished. It's done. Then Jesus speaks of forgiveness, of finishing the rule of death and sin and evil. And then he commends himself into the hands of his Father. And in doing that, we know the outcome. A situation that appeared to be hopeless, a situation where it appeared all the rule of evil had had its way. There would be resurrection, renewal, and restoration. All because once again, the creation that God made and cared for and loved was reconnected through Christ's saving work. And it is to that connection that we need to point ourselves every day. We look at the cross to remember Christ is ours and he sends us into everyday living into all the crises we face personal, professionally, and throughout the world. We are sent to redeem them, to restore, to renew, to speak a word of resurrection hope. Do not misunderstand. That doesn't mean we come with a magic wand. Would to God that were true that we could wipe away the flooding and the fires, the disease, the evil in people's hearts. It's not that easy. Christ shows us on a cross. But every situation is redeemable, even if we cannot solve it this side of eternity. It's redeemable because even in the face of death, 
we bring Christ, who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, who says from a cross, I love you, I forgive you, sin has no more power over you, who through that cross connects us in water, in bread, in wine. So that life-giving presence from the cross comes to you and me as we stretch out our hands to one another and to Christ. And he says to us, peace be with you. Not the kind of peace that the world thinks about where everything is smooth and calm, but peace even in the midst of the storm because we know that Christ is in charge. He rules not from an encrusted throne of jewels but from that wood of the cross. And as we are instructed on Good Friday, behold the wood of the cross whereon was hung the salvation of the world. There it is. We need to look at it every day and we need to live it. First, with the power of prayer. And then, as God gives us strength and the ability to bring to all of these situations whatever material aid, whatever comfort, whatever compassion, we are able to do on our own or by supporting others so that even in the midst of the worst trials and difficulties, they know and we know God is present. As we look to the cross, we remind ourselves that one day we too will come to that moment of redemptive power when we look to the cross as we breathe our last. The hymn writer captures it well. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me toward the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.